Today we start with the chapter for grade 11, trigonometric functions, and we're going to start off by having a look at the theory that you were taught in grade 10. Firstly, you need to know the form of the three basic trig functions. Firstly, we're going to have a look at the graph of y is equal to 1 sin x. This graph starts at the point 0, 0, and it takes 360 degrees to complete one full wavelength. The graph has turning points at 91 and again at 270 minus 1 and x-intercepts at 180 and then again at 360 degrees. The function y is equal to cos x starts at the coordinate 0, 1 and also takes 360 degrees to complete one full wavelength. It has a turning point at 180 minus 1 and again at 360, 1. And also x-intercepts at 90 degrees and 270 degrees. Lastly, we have the function y is equal to tan x. The first two graphs formed continuous wavelengths. The tan graph, however, has separate curves, and in between these curves, there are asymptotes. I'm reminding you that an asymptote is a line that the graph moves closer to but never touches. The tan graph has vertical asymptotes at 90 degrees and again at 270 degrees. The reason for these asymptotes is the identity that tan x is equal to sin x divided by cos x. And if we go and have a look at the cos graph, we will see that cos of 90 as well as the cos of 270 degrees will have a value of 0 and that means for the tan graph is zero in the denominator, and that is why we then have asymptotes. In between these two asymptotes, the tan graph then has its normal curve, and exactly in the middle of these two asymptotes, it will cut through the x-axis. This x-intercept is then also the point of inflection, where this graph changes from concave down to concave up. The next x-intercept is at 360 degrees, and then of course there was one already at 0, 0. Because the tan graph does not have a maximum or minimum value at the turning point, we need to always remember to add another important point. This important point will always lie exactly in the middle of the x-intercept and the asymptote, and for the basic tan graph, this will be at 45 degrees, and there, there will be a y value of 1. Then you were also taught two new definitions, and that is the period and the amplitude of the graph. The period of the graph is the number of degrees that it takes for one full wavelength or one full curve to complete. And for the sin as well as the cos graph, this will be 360 degrees. After 360 degrees, this same curve will start repeating itself. The tan graph has a period of 180 degrees. In between two asymptotes, which is exactly 180 degrees, one wavelength or curve will be completed. The second important definition is then the amplitude of the graph. The amplitude of a graph is the maximum displacement from the resting position or from the midline of the graph. If we look at the tan graph, because this graph keeps moving up as well as down, it does not have a maximum displacement and doesn't have an amplitude. For the sin as well as the cos graph, the maximum displacement up and down from the midline is exactly one unit. U of two. These three basic graphs can then undergo four different transformations. There are two horizontal transformations and two vertical transformations. And in grade 10, you were taught the two vertical transformations. Firstly, there was the influence of the a value that is multiplied to the front of the function. This value influences the amplitude of the graph. For the basic sin graph, the a value is 1 and this indicates that the amplitude is 1. And as that a value 
becomes bigger, you can see that the amplitude also increases. If, for example, we have a look at an A value of 2, you can see that the maximum displacement up as well as down will have a value of 2. This A value can also be negative. This negative A value shows that there was also a reflection around the x-axis. Here we now have an A value of minus 1, which shows that the amplitude is still 1, but the minus indicates that it has been reflected around the x-axis. And then, of course, the negative value can become bigger and bigger. And that is why it is important to know the basic trig graphs, so that when we get to the determining of the equation, you can see the difference between a positive A value, where it first increases and after the turning point decreases again, or the reflection of the sin graph, where it first decreases and then after the turning point increases again. The bigger this A value becomes, the more the graph stretches vertically up and down. When this A value, however, is between 0 and 1, the graph will be compressed vertically. The D value is a constant value that is added or subtracted at the end of the equation. And this D value moves the whole graph up if it is bigger than 0 or positive, And it moves the graph down when it is negative. As the D value becomes bigger, the original graph moves upwards. It is important to realize that this D value does not influence the amplitude of the graph because in this case the midline is at one and a half and from there the maximum displacement up as well as down is still one unit. Then when this D value becomes negative the graph will now move down with that specific value. The amplitude still stays 1. So here you can see that every coordinate simply moved down 2. So 0 moved down to minus 2. 1 moved down to minus 1. Once again, 0 moving down to minus 2. Minus 1 will move down to minus 3. And it will continue like that. In the next video, we'll have a look at how you go about drawing such a graph.